All right. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone, to another exciting Battle for Midway match brought to you by MW Comp. Uh, we have uh, Van Zant Militia, aka BPL, versus Esh. Shoot. What is that name? Echelon? Echelon? Wait. S card. <laughs> hold on, hold on. S card on suicide. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, very unique name. These guys are, uh, this will be a Div G match. We give Team 1 their 5 minute counter. And we are. Yeah, here we go. This match has officially started. Now, while we wait for these two teams to ready up, I'm going to flip it over to the map room here real quick. But first... Got to double check my settings, make sure everything's running. It looks like it's running. Yeah, it looks like everything's good so far. This should be an interesting matchup. Both these teams. Uh, Well, it's Div G. Both these teams have done interesting things this season. Uh, we have, uh, last week, I recorded uh, BPL versus um, oh, Fjord or somebody. I don't remember <laughs> the matchup. But we saw some interesting plays on uh, like Bear Claw. A lot of push brawl. Uh, bit of a bracket. They, they take a lot of bracketed mechs, but these lower divs tend to do that. So while we wait on these guys... Get it over to the map. Uh, first map of the evening will be Terra Therma. Uh, we'll be playing Terra Therma twice, Viridian Bog twice, and then a uh, map ban, for those who don't know. All right. So. This is the central area, the central theta point. Usually we'll see, uh, especially in lower... These lower div teams, te uh, the team's usually doing that. Uh, team 1 will come... Oh, that's red. Team 1 will usually come swing around here, come in here, uh, for uh, generally a brawl, maybe send a mech to Sigma, come this way. Uh, in the higher end, we'll usually see like a... We'll see a mech get put up here from Team 1. They'll send a, a, a very pop tardy scout to get up here. Uh, yesterday we saw uh, a Highlander. I think it was Weapon Master from 5JDX and a Highlander up here. Uh, getting all kinds of shots down on some uh, mechs here around Theta. There, was a, there uh, was a cat mech on Theta, which is also another thing up here can do. Can get some nice shots down here. Team 2 side. Don't This team hasn't been casted before. I believe this is a new comp team, too. Uh, so, I don't know much about them, but we're going to find out today. Team 1 usually will send a Kappa here, Capper here, uh, then something to Theta. Well, they probably usually go this way. But they're going to send mechs to Theta to contest it. At least a light mech. And then, of course, get this cap here. By doing this, secure your two back caps. And then you're prepared for a fight on Theta. In the lower divs, 90, probably 90% of the fights happen in these nine grid squares. If I stop dragging my stuff around, these nine grid squares, 90% of the fights happen. So I don't expect it to be too much different here. Should be interesting. We see some, some we saw some great plays in teams uh, yesterday. Not just the night, not just the Highlander here. We saw. I think it was Basalt from Fidelis Makita. Camped up here with a... I think it was a Goss Night Gear. Let's see here. It looks like... Team 1's locked. Team 2's on 5 minutes. Alright. Some excellent play from up here. There was a Light Mech that came running through here. Got some shots into it. He killed it. Uh, but it ran this way. 
So I think that's probably the only two like real high up like areas where we saw some action happen. Uh, we saw uh, a mech be up here before. I think it was a shadow cat. It got shots on this light mech I was talking about, but it, I'm pretty sure after that light mech moved, it just jumped down. But up here was a, a hold position that wasn't the most used one I've ever seen before. It should be interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have a co-caster here, just the banter and fill dead air. So I'm going to do my best while I can. Get this back to the lobby for you guys. Team 1's ready. Team 2's almost locked. Just a couple guys to go. See what the uh, chat is. BPL as always. They do weird locks. Team 1 is locked up like the pills we forgot to take. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I just read that out loud. Okay, yeah. Remind me never to read <clears throat> BPL stuff out loud. Because there's a 50-50 chance. Get banned. <laughs> Either way, being Div G, we're, like I mentioned at the top, we're going to see a lot of lot of brawl. Probably brawl all five drops, most likely. Which will be... Uh, kind of for the par, for these lower divs. But the real question would be, how do they brawl? What kind of brawl builds do they decide to take? All that stuff's going to matter. Just waiting here on the last person on Team 2 to lock. Curious what the map bans will be. Uh, I expect Tourmaline will immediately be banned. Probably Polar next. So I... Oh, here we go. Team 2 has lock, so we are going to go right into this match. Me being a simpleton, I kind of like this map. I know it's not the most popular. The most popular by a, a, a mile is probably Mining Collective. I used to say Canyon Network, but I think Mining Collective might actually be the most popular map. But you guys in the chat can tell me if and when I'm wrong. Let's wait for the next to lo uh, everyone to load into this map here. This is the central uh, capping point. This is where most of the fight's going to happen. It's that volcano I mentioned where you can get a mech up through here, climb up here, and have overwatch over this whole area. Then over here, you can get a mech up here, and then it can overwatch all of this. So, both those positions uh, provide Overwatch to multiple caps. We saw some play yesterday over here at uh, Sigma with uh, some fighting happening there in the 228 versus. Oh, I had a bright fire. I forgot who they fought. <laughs> you know who they fought. All right, looking at the mechs here, uh, we got triple hunchbacks, four, five. Oh my god, it's six hunchbacks and a flake. Boys, we got six hunchbacks and a flea. Uh, three two Cs, three IS ones. Uh, LB two, uh, LB ten, small lasers, LB tens, L SRM six. Okay, okay. Now what we got on the other ones? They have resource point gamma. As pointed, the flea is going to Sigma. And, uh, fear going down the center, and the other three are coming over this way. Uh, AC-20 medium lasers, AC-20 medium lasers, okay. So, they got three AC-20s on the field, six LB-10s, and four SRM-6s. Should be interesting. Now, on the other side, a Skarden. Or I dragged this on too long. Uh, we got triple Orions, Osiris, and triple Parada. Those triple Paradas are going to be pretty dangerous if uh, they don't get focused pretty hard. But... Oh, this isn't good. This Orion's barreling in, but look at this team. They're 
They're like 700 meters apart between them all. This first Orion is going to get focused hard, and that's exactly what's happening. He's getting pushed to the low ground. The fleet gets some shots. The Hunchback is chasing. The Hunchback should not be chasing. Because uh, the rest of the team is pushing in. Uh, Ralphie is getting basically annihilated here, down to 35%. This Orion is still up. Uh, the Azir does go down, though. Scrap battle. He's the next to drop. Just getting focused here. Uh, Zelgar in the Parada. He just he gets hit once. He's already down 60%. That's the biggest issue with Paradas. They have like their paper thin armor. As Osiris kind of just running out of the fight now. Wraith now the next focused target here. It's uh six to f six to five. Now it's uh five to five. This could this brawl could go either way. But one of the Paradas does go down. It looks like Black Pants is winning this fight. These Piranhas need to get more damage in. This Piranha's fighting a flea. I don't. He's, it doesn't look like he's holding his machine gun burns on it very well. These uh, these three had the Hunchback pinned. One uh, overheats and dies. Uh, don't know if they're going to get this Hunchback fast enough. All right, they get his leg and his side torso. A little bit of focus fire issues there. Some of these mechs are damaged all over. I, we saw a lot of mechs get down to 20, 30% HP. That's that's just being shot everywhere. Uh, a lot of then again, there is a lot of spread weapons going on right now. Skeletor here, last one standing. It looks like he's going to get this Prada. Yeah, he gets the Prada. His back is about. He still has a lot of front armor, but his back is nearly dead. The only one left is this Osiris. I think the flea might get him over here. Saris is at 81% but red. Oh, that's because he took... Oh, yeah, he took all CT damage. Holy crap. Yeah, that that CT is cherry red. This flea is going to definitely get him and that'll be game. Very hectic brawl. I just took a look at check, chat. You got to point out their div F. Oh, that's, that's my bad. Yeah, that's my bad, guys. <laughs> I'm so used to BPL being in the G-Spot division that I never thought they wouldn't be able to get in it again. Uh, Taking a look at damage numbers here. This, Yeah, the Orion put out a lot of work. Deagle Eyes and Osiris also put out a lot of work. Uh, Flow State, just devastating with his Orion build. The Piranhas... More damage than I thought. The Prada is very damn. Da uh, they are the definition of a glass cannon. They have all the weapons, none of the armor. GG's both teams. Forget that API. All right. Alright, now I gotta get these teams swap sides. Alright, and then team one's on five minute timer. Everything looks correct? Cool. Make sure the scoreboard updated. Yeah, we're good to go, guys. So that was interesting. Basically played out, like as I said, basically just a huge fight on Theta. Since these teams are going to take a few minutes, swap it over to the map room real quick. Talk about what just happened. So they, uh, Team 1, BPL, they had a fleet, went to Sigma. They had three triple hunchbacks that came up this way. And then triple hunchbacks that went this way. Team 2, uh, for the most part, they, they kind of sent it. But they've kind of sent it all right here. This area, 
but they came out as a cargo line. So in a push brawl, you need to be, uh, I don't want to say balled up because then you're also super easy, but you need to be together. You guys all need to, uh, what's the fight engages? Everyone needs to be engaging. It can't be the first guy engages. Dot dot. Now the second guy is engaged. Dot dot. Now the third. Yeah, you don't want that to happen. That delay, that delay is death. It's the the sound of yeah. It's the sound of death <laughs> that delay is. So you don't want that to happen. You want it all to be in. So what we saw from BPL right here is they had their three hunchbacks all right here. I'll just draw that real quick. They have the three hunchbacks here that started the receive. Right. These other three quickly joined in. So. These Orions saw the three hunchbacks. You know, when I, if I saw just three hunchbacks, I had three Orions. That's a no-brainer. That's a fight I can, uh, the, the Orions can win. But when the Orions come in one at a time, about a few hundred meters apart, you know, that second mech has to move a few hundred meters before it can now start sh shooting, right? So the first guy's stuck in the fight for five, ten seconds on his own, which is what we saw. Uh, so BPL had a good, like, start of the firing line there. These three came in. And then just the whole, it just became pure chaos right here. Uh, both teams dancing around each other, uh, and you know and the BPL it it waxed and waned a bit. It could have gone either way. And then um, BPL just they just had better focus fire. Uh, they had more firepower left alive, and yeah, they just it just worked out for them pretty good. Now. For the basically what, what I kind of expect from the other team here, uh, it's kind of the same thing, just reversed, right? So I expect uh, Escardo to do this the same thing. Oh yeah, uh, Escardo. Your, your name sounds too much like Escargo. Just I'll put that out there. I'll call you the Snail Team. <laughs> uh, but I kind of expect the same thing, a similar pathing. I don't expect them to send three mechs this way. Uh, maybe one or two. The light mech, like I originally would say, is like a sigma, and then come start heading towards here. I kind of expect the, the vast majority to be here, go through here, and then pick the fight right about here. That's kind of what I expect to happen. So we're going to see. Should be an interesting brawl either way. Double checking my settings, because I'm alone, I'm paranoid that I'm going to do a radio cast. <laughs> because no one stopped bringing it up all week. Yeah, I hate you all. Uh, <laughs> checking chat. Those are actually swaybacks. This is not Div F. This is Group Six. <laughs> I'm not saying that out loud. Nope. Nope. Almost did it. All right, team one here taking a while. The lock, I think they got two minutes left. Oh, that's should say a while. It's just taking a while for me. Now BPL, I believe, won their last match. I need to look that up. We're gonna go over some turn tournament standings here. In a moment. Let's take a look at their division. Ah, uh, uh, here they are. All right, take a look at the standings. Uh, Fjord Jaegers is in the lead of this division with 41 points. Uh, team one locked. Can't tell anymore. They never say locked. Okay, yeah, team one is locked. Team two's on the five minute. They're typing so much, I can't tell. <laughs> uh, so in this division, Fjord Jaegers uh, is in the lead with 41 points, three wins, zero losses. Uh, then we got Esrot's Team Optic, 35 points with three wins, zero losses. 
Bears Brawlers with uh one win, two losses at 29 points. That's the beauty of, that's that's where a lot of people kind of like points based uh competitions instead of just one or zero win lose. Um you know, how well you play can still get you close. Bears Brawlers only one win compared to the 3-0 team, only behind by 6 points. Admirable. Swords and Sabres, zero wins, three losses, 23 points. Escard and Suicide, uh, one win, one loss. So they've, they, they must have already had their bye week. Yeah, it looks like them and Van Zant had their bye weeks already because they only have two games on the record. Or no, they just haven't played yet. That's right, they haven't played yet today. <laughs> you can ignore me. Completely ignore what I just said. They haven't played yet, so their points haven't been factored in yet. So these standings could change depending on how this match goes. Uh, Escarden uh, or Van Zant with enough wins here could could sh could rise up uh, a, a few places in the standings. So we'll see how that goes. Both these teams now are green border. We're just waiting for them to lock. Once they lock, we'll get this next match or the next drop started of this match. All right, team two has locked. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. Now, BPL forgot to mention. They've been, they're kind of infamous for try, for pulling off theme decks. Now, they're not the first team to do it. They won't be the last. I've had a couple theme decks myself based that were silly. Um, but the, I don't know what they call that hunchback or one. That was obviously one of their theme decks. Uh, we'll see what this next theme is going into this drop. See what what they what they decide to try to take six of next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just I would call it the rule breaker because like it's not breaking the rules, but because there's two different chassis of hunchback in the game, so yeah, you got six hunchbacks in there. Oh, oh no, hold, hold called by team two. Bell here just crashed. All right. Nothing we can do, but you can start talking about these builds. I'm over here, player. So, Command, let's in. see. Triple chargers, two piranhas, three piranhas, and a flea. Okay, they're doing the triple uh, flea thing, or the triple piranha thing this time. All right. What we got here? Uh, 15 micro lasers. That's a, that thing hurts. My, one of the first games I played after the Piranha was released was someone typed in all chat. It was uh, Solaris City. Someone types in all chat, I'm sorry about this, and then I immediately fucking die. And I had no idea what happened. Like, I see this little tiny mech running off into the distance, right? And it wasn't until uh, someone clipped it. It was, uh, it was one of the streamers. Uh, the thing just ran up behind me and just tickled my butt with it. So, strong. It can be a very deadly backstabber. Very hot, though. You can only get a couple shots off. And then a cool shot will give you a third shot. But it's running bare minimum amount of heat sink, so... It doesn't get... It takes a while before you can get your fourth shot. <laughs> after you get those first three off. Uh, machine guns and stuff. Eight mag shot on that flea. Pretty deadly. Checking the chargers over here. What we got? Seven small lasers, seven small lasers, seven small laser. Uh, maxing out that uh, small laser work on that thing. Nice. Surprisingly, with only seven small lasers, that thing can that thing can be pretty gnarly. With just the sheer DPS it has from quirks. Taking a look at the other team here. We got the like, javelin, shadow cat. What we got here. One heavy Goss 30. 
not not sold on that one. Uh, Sun Spider here, four Ultra AC20. Night Gear, six Ultra AC20. Ooh, are they? This isn't a brawl. Are they going to try to ballistic receive here? Ooh, I don't know if this is going to work. I mean, it could. Uh, what LBX10, six AP Goss on that Shadow Cat. Kind of actually like that build. Ah, Javelin. Six on machine guns and a snub. So they're running only two range mechs. Everything else is more knife fighty. Yeah. Interesting. Those range mechs are going to have a hard time. They're, they're relying pretty heavily on those guys just We've outputting damage. Just unloading a lot of damage yeah, before uh, the enemy control. team can close they in for the brawl. Now, BPL has Kappa and Gamma already, FC Sigma, uh, we expect both teams to get those pretty early. S Garden, looks like they're heading in, but right here by Kappa, we got a four-man wolf pack here that is about to run into them. Oh, they didn't see them because they just got behind the rock just in time. So this is interesting. These four are going to get all the way over here. All right, are they looking right? Come on, look right. Look right. You got... No, no. Yeah, you needed to look right. You could have scouted the enemy is charging up that ramp towards your three guys that are about to take on seven. This, this does not look good for BPL. These three chargers are going to charge it alone. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're doing... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this isn't good. These chargers are going to die for free. I don't know if those four can get into this fight in time without losing some bigs for this. The Sunspot and Nike, though, are going to get ran over by these four lights. There's nothing they can do about this, because uh, this fight is all the way over here. Now, Ralphie's got pulled out of this fight, and this other Charger is kind of just dancing here in the center. I'm surprised he's still up as much as he is. This Night Gear is eating up all these shots. Like I said, he's going to get ran over by this light pack. Both legs, both legs gone. They're moving forward. The Sun Spider is pushing forward because he cannot be in this fight back here alone. Uh... Sun Spider tries to play defense with that, but I don't know if that's going to work alone. Hedgehog does go down. The other two Chargers are still up. They need to stay up long enough for these four lights to kill these mechs off now. Well, there's only three there. Where's the, where'd the fourth one go? <laughs> I lost track of one of their mechs. Uh, Sun Spider goes down. Locust, uh, Locust self-destructs. Overheat damage. Now all the Chargers are dead. Uh, oh, the other prod is dead. I didn't see that. Oh, he... Looks like he got drilled by the, uh, yeah, he got drilled CT rear by this Night Gear. It looks like Night Gear did get a kill before he died. But it's three on three, and S Garden has the HP advantage. Yeah, Wraith overheats those the. That strong alpha damage is is biting him in the ass right now. Actually, the Milser died from overheat. Maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> but, yeah, this is this is going to be S. Garden's game. Oh, I think they needed to look right. They would have scouted those mechs sooner. I think if they, if, uh, they did, they could have gotten to this fight 10, 15 seconds... They could have got a 10, 15 second head start and been right in the rear of those two mechs uh, right as they started shooting these chargers. And then what would have happened is uh, they they couldn't turn around. They, they would have been, they would either turn around, these chargers could have pushed in completely for free and that they would have still died of this light pack anyways. Uh, so timing, timing, timing. I, I like the commitment to the push, but that one, that's a that was a timing error there. Javan's going to take the Gamma here. Sigma's already flipping. Actually, I think what Sigma flips, it'll be game over. I think that'll give it the 750 auto counter. And then we'll be moving on to Viridian next. We've captured resource point Sigma. Yeah, and there it goes. GG's everybody. Good attempt. I was skeptical on the range, on the two range guys escorted, but it worked out for you. Or the two AC2 boats in that position, but it worked out for you. GG's. 
pretty <laughs> wow pretty across the board damage numbers like that's pretty consistent across everyone well done yeah ralphie you he got laid into the ac2 mix real early and pulled back out of the fight uh which is unfortunate it happens but it's unfortunate I would like to see, see more damage from these piranhas. I, I mean, yeah, it's only a 20 ton mech, but if you're going to go like Piranha 2, well, the Piranha 2 to get a kill, but I, I just don't think it has the sustainability for a brawl fight like you were trying there. But GG's. Get back to the lobby and get the uh, map swapped. Team one now is on the five men. Okay. A lot of brawling. A couple range mechs from S Garden. A couple uh, AC2, uh, UAC2 boats specifically. That Sun Spider and that Night Gear have been. They can farm quick play pretty well. Don't see them as often in comp. Uh. But they do, they're not rare by any means. The builds are just uncommon. I hope our super banner will make it into the stream. Yeah, it, yeah, it will. It will. For sure. But like, don't go overboard with it, boys. <laughs> don't go overboard. Okay, so. We're going to swap it over to the map room. We're going to talk about this map strap while we wait for these steeps to ready up. Interesting enough this time. Uh, it was... They <laughs> they both... Well... S Garden basically did the same thing that BPL did. So the team was basically played roughly the same way both times by both teams. Team 2 side was different by both, by direction and stuff. We'll talk about this one. They had the Cappers, four of them. I don't, I don't know if they were all in Charlie, but they all went to Kappa. They swung to Sigma. And then these guys had their Chargers, which went to Gamma and then Theta. And well, they they went a little wider. They 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 approached Gamma from like over here actually. I'll just redraw that. For you. <laughs> It'd be better. Uh, they approached Gamma from over here. Blue team. This time. Sent. I think it was. They sent multiple mechs that. Something went Sigma and then this way, right? But they generally they had a couple mechs. They had a few mechs go here. I think it was four. Uh, two range traders stayed right here. The rest went over here. And then set up. That's where we found. And then they met up with the guys that came up here, over here. So there was, it was, it ended up as two mechs here, basically four or five over here, and I think maybe one running around. Uh, where things, where things got interesting was when, uh, these mechs were on their pathing, over here. The sigma. Uh, they didn't. They missed. The four mechs, because uh, by the time they crossed here, these four mechs got behind this rock. So there's a little gap here that they they almost may have, almost spotted them through. Then when they got to Sigma, uh, as they were getting close to Sigma, they could look right and saw these mechs. And then they could have ignored Sigma and then just started the approach, because then they would have been timed with this charger push. Uh, they took Sigma and then they came into the fight, but but they came in the fight after the Chargers started the fight, right? So we saw these Chargers start this engagement here. Uh, these these AC2 boats lit them. Just lit them up, man. It was absolutely. To the point that they stopped for momentum and actually started backpedaling to try to hide from these two. Right as that backpedal started happening, right when they were getting overwhelmed, and these mechs weren't even in the fight yet, these four... Uh, that's blue. These four go th come right into their ass. And and attempt to run the two range mechs over. Now it looks like one one of the mechs either self-destructed or got yeeted. 
by the night gear before the night gear went down. But the rest ran ran them over and then tried to and then tried tried to join the fight. But they couldn't join the fight because they got uh, there was a single shadow cat that they were dealing with, and that whole time it was like a three v one that was just taking too long to kill. These chargers, the rest of these mechs just duked it out. The chargers, a charger would die, a mech would die, a charger would die, two mechs would die. That kind of thing kind of happened. And in the end, when all the smoke cleared, Escarden remained the uh, team standing. So they pulled it off in the end. Now we're going to talk about Viridian. This is the map that they're getting ready to play on. Team 1 just locked. I'm going to give Team 2 five minutes. Uh, I kind of see... I've seen this map played this way before. I really... I've seen it almost too many times. Too many teams pull this off now. And I don't know if it's really working out for anybody. Unless they get lucky and they just happen to catch the opponent guard off to the, your opposing team off guard. Which is pushes. Theta pushes, specifically. Uh, we've seen some measure of potential success from Team Side going like this way, right? Uh, push coming up there. Team 2 side, not really very much. I mean, we've seen a couple pushes come right down this way before. But they usually all, all get stalled up here at Theta, because... I haven't seen a a push uh, like two push teams run into each other here yet. It's usually only one side's pushing, the other side's trying to receive the push. And what happens is you get mechs stationed up in all these little ground, you know, up, all kinds of high grounds they can get up in. You know, it's just literally dozens of of hills that you can just put a mech up, and now you have like a concave Overwatch, right? So I just haven't seen pushes from team two side go well and right now it is bpl on team two they're a very pushy team so uh if they push i don't i hope they don't do that i guess <laughs> to be fair it's not much better than a push this way or like straight crossed right uh still a team if they know which direction you're pushing from um given just even just 20 30 seconds to prepare they can get pretty good firing lines in a lot of parts of the map for it so just things to be aware of now team one side we've seen pushes where the map from team one side we've seen pushes come well god damn it you blew arrow coming from, like this way to some success you still got this whole open area to survive doing that so it, it'll come down to what these both these teams are doing i'm going to flip back to the lobby because it looks like both teams are finally ready yep team two is locked and i'm going to launch it Now, since S. Carden did take range max on the last map, right? In that last drop, a couple of them. I'm curious to see if they're going to do that here again. Be the uh, team outside the norm in these lower divisions. Let's see, Heavy Goss, Shadow Cat. That's their third shot. Can't remember. Heavy Goss, Shadow Cat. What else we got? Uh, ERP, Goss, Marauder 4L, or AC10 Annie. That's the 1A, right? You at least put, you put it on the right one? Yes. That build hits like a freight train. Uh, it's not the most meta build, as, you know, there's this like 500 or 480 500 something meters range i think it's five, five something 
and you have to expose a lot because it's all because two of your your gods are arm mounted and hanging at your waist. So it does have that drawback. AC two spider, Command, four AC five night star. The they have a lot of quick play farm builds <laughs> that they use for comp. I have no, I've officially noticed that. You are on notice. Uh, two heavy machine guns, two uh, medium pulse on these locusts. Uh, now we're going to go check a look at BPL. We got a Stalker, Cyclops, Jenner. Actually, taking back three Stalkers, and three Jenners, and a Cyclops. Six, six larges. Holy crap! Uh, oh, they're just regular larges. Uh, SB Goss, ER Peeps. Oh my god, they're going trade. Holy shit. I, I just spent like... Five minutes talking about how the that they're definitely going to push here and how the but no, no <laughs> just oh shit they're absolutely not doing that that is so funny to me all right they're taking this hill here this is a very strong trade hill the hill over overlooking Kappa especially to receive a push this is a great place to be as long as you're not stepping on each other's toes now I would like to actually see the more rangy guy which I think that uh. Cyclops is Gamma over is here, so they're all not in one spot, we have right? Gamma. A team one here is spread out pretty considerably. They have a lot of like mid rangey range trade. This, the Ultra AC 2s are long range, but kind of a damage over time weapon system. This Annie's probably. Oh, he's just outside of optimal. If I recall correctly, to that that Overwatch over there, even if you max out all the range uh, nodes, skill tree. Jenner's just playing kind of defensively here. Escard has uh, Escard S es Escad. God damn it, Escardrin has the cap advantage, so they don't need like to push or anything. They don't really have a deck to do that, anyways. These Jenner's are SRM bombers. They could. They can do some gnarly work. But yeah, uh, speaking of the hills I talked about, the receive pushes, look at this. Look at this, yes. Love to see it. Well, this is the good spread. They can overwatch each other, cover a lot of lanes, and have a lot of like map awareness, right? These Jenners are going to get spotted here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Even from the guy I was just looking at, he definitely saw them. And now these mechs are all going to try to get pot shots at them. What, uh, these Jenners, I don't know if they're trying to take e Epsilon. I don't think they can. These Locusts, these Locusts are in danger. Oh no, you guys are in danger. You're, you're going to take this fight away from your bigs. The Sun Spider's coming in for the fight. Well, there's the third Jenner. I'm, I'm not sure what he's doing all the way over there. But, oh, oh, these Jenners, once these, these Locusts came over here... Oh, they had this rock. Oh, they were hiding. This is the, uh... That's now the legendary Shadow Ace rock. This is. Where we fought him, uh, he was cored out everywhere. And a light mech. Just a scratch from death. And then fought a Marauder. A hundred ton mech. For three whole minutes, man. The Jenners have spread out. I thought for sure they were going to at least try to kill one of those locusts because the locusts picked that fight and they shouldn't have. And they got out actually healthier than these Jenners did. Now I know that Sun Spider finally got an angle to get shots into it, but I don't know. Uh, oh, Stalkers and everything are doing a push. Uh, they were forced to kind of make a play here, but they do not have a fire line. These guys are just kind of like peeking around each other. Which, if you're peeking around people like this, well, that's not too bad. But when you're, you just don't want to be stepping on each toes. That's why uh, usually you want your firing lines a little more spread up. This they're kind of stuck here, which is hard. But right there, Hedgehog peeked first alone. You don't want to be doing that. You should, he he should be waiting until uh, Anti Skeletor starts his peek, and then by the time you know he gets to position, you can be out in two. And then both be shooting at the same time. Hedgehog gets shot by the Annie. This Annie is just going to lay into these. Yeah, he's just annihilating these stalkers at close range. You just can't. You just can't survive 
four, uh, 40 damage every, what, two point something seconds at, at this close of a range. Only thing left is one of the Jenners. Escardin going to sweep this one up pretty substantially. Great map control. I love the Annie here in the center. And they took all the caps. Uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the Jenners were doing. Uh, they kind of seem just to be dancing in the the enemy backfield, but not like doing anything without sounding too rude. <laughs> Don Pellegrino, Nightstar, got a good farm on 723. Uh, scrap metal, 560. Unfortunately, I w these Jenners just didn't. Uh, the damage numbers tell everything. They didn't achieve anything in this match, unfortunately. Um, the Stalkers and the Cyclops, they just got torn to shreds. Once they peaked, those AC2 max with their range DPS, and then add the Annie smacking for 40 damage right there, it that was it just wasn't it wasn't ever going to go well for them, unfortunately, in that position. But well played, regardless. Well played. Get the team swap going. And then get the next drop for everyone. That up. Be another win for them. One thing I like about BPL is even even when they're they lose. They don't let it seem to get to them. They always have good spirits. They and they're always game for another round. So good on them. Both teams are swapped. Team one is now on the timer. All right, and away we go. Check. Take a look here at Twitch chat. See what you guys have been saying. Auto binds are helpful if the speed of the engines aren't synced. Yeah. Auto binds are also annoying. Bad potato. No, you bad potato. Q F E. -A. Uh. Oh yeah, the team. <laughs> yeah, they're from that unit. Yeah, I don't know why I can't say it right. Just, just my midwestern drawl, I guess. Well, while we wait on them, let's take a look at the map and talk about the really good positioning from Escardo. So, neither, neither team took Brawl decks, which super surprised me. But that's one thing I love about comp, is you, no matter what, I always seem to be right. <laughs> Why do you guys let me cast? Uh, so, if you're team one, yeah, that Annie, he kind of went here. They said a capper. Cappers. Take the caps. Uh, do. And of course, their home cap, right? So by Epsi Gamma Theta, they secured the three cap pretty early. Team two. They got their Sigma. Uh, I think their Jenner pack went... It was something like that. Actually, I can draw this. They're really like passive, almost passive aggressively passive. <laughs> uh, they kind of went like that before I swapped back to the main fight, which was happening here in the center. Uh, team two. Team two went. They set all their bigs kind of here. The hold. The problem with a hold strat like that, right? If you only have two of the caps, you're fucked. You have to secure the three cap. You have to secure theta. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Your lights needed to be going this way. They had to. If you want to hold this ground, you have to take the three caps. Now, team one had more range. So even if you took the three cap, you were probably going to get bullied by those AC2 mech. I don't think there's any two ways about it at this stage. 
And you would have had a push, but you wouldn't have had to, like, push a firing line, right? Because that's kind of what happened. Because Team 1, they managed. It's drawn here. What did they do? It was, like, here. 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 I think that's where they had their range guys. Maybe not the Fox 5 one. Maybe it was further back. But, yeah, they basically had a whole range thing going on. Um, and as I'm always saying, you know, firing lines. Yeah, concave firing lines. Uh, well, it was a little smaller, but yeah, it was a concave firing line. And then, once they had the three caps, they just had to hold. And that's exactly what they did. They just held. That's all they had to do. It was, come come take our caps, basically, is what happened. And then, these guys had to push. They pushed this way. And once they rounded that corner, oh, that's where they got smacked by the Annie that was right here. They're getting traded at at range. Um, They're getting traded at at range. They're getting smacked by the Annie right here. It just, just wasn't looking good. Uh, they had, I mean, they had like six uh, large lasers, right? That's a decent amount of damage. But you're fighting two UAC two boats and an Annie. It's just not enough, and that's what happened. They ended up uh, just melting right here, while the Jenners died back here somewhere. I'm not even sure how the Jenners died, unfortunately. But yeah, this pathing and how uh, it just didn't work out for it, unfortunately. Now team one is locked in the lobby, so I'm gonna swap it back. Well, it looks like team locked locked a minute ago, actually. So just say four minutes, but I'm just casting today. I'm not an admin. It's up to them to nitpick times if they want to. Looks like Team 2 is almost locked, too. Now, let's see. You're stacking Alpha Charlie Lance from Team 1's side. So, they're stacking the bottom half of the map. So, they might be playing for Theta this time. Maybe even brawling. Maybe they're going to do that Team 1 brawl push Theta side that I talked about how I wasn't a big fan of. <laughs> now, Team 2. What have we got here? Stacking Bravo Charlie. They're stacking the top two Lances. Which... Indicates to me they're planning to hold it up here, up here probably. Well, actually, they could be brawling too. It's four in Charlie, so we're gonna see. Uh, let's wait for Team Two to lock. They're green boarded. Just waiting for the type locked, so I can launch it. Come on, people. Also. Welcome to Sunday evening to my lazy cast. Right? I don't want to watch her. Well, I don't think anyone does. Well, I take that back. There's some people. What are you guys even talking about? What is this conversation? Y'all need Jesus. I'm just going to sit here talking. Okay, there we go. There's the locked I needed. All right, I'm watching. All right, both teams stack the two lances. Take a look at some of the mechs they have here. Team one side, we got three Ultra C2, two large pulse laser bounty hunter. Is that bounty hunter? No, this is Marauder 3R, sorry. Color got me. Uh, Snub Spider. 
What did I just do? Wait, what just happened? <laughs> what? What did I do? Can I click that? You guys see this overlay? What is happening here? Well, unfortunately, you can see all the. What did I do? Ah! All right. What? Command that coming in. Capture and hold the read. That looks like I'm in on that. Stop any hostiles that get in your way. And my keyboard seems to be constantly trying to type. Not good. Enemy forces well, have sigma. That's okay. I'll fix that after this trap. Uh, we got triple chargers, triple ca uh, Centurion yin, yin Lone Wangs, uh, Champion Invictus. Resource point beta is ours. Like to see the Wangs, Wang Gang. Yeah, shout control. out to my Wang Gang. Uh, triple Mar um, two Marauders, Marauder, two Scorches, two Marauder, two Sea Scorches, uh, Commando, and a uh, Temper Wolf. They are. Pushing the south area. Oh man, my lobby patrols have gone all out of whack on this one. Oh, that doesn't fix it. Artillery strike on the Shoot. Looks like we're looking for us inside the cockpits now. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Full brawl. Hedgehog get laid into here. Hedgehog's about to get uh, picked here. So's Wraith Star. Both of them super injured. Chargers just dealing some serious work. Lin the Yin, the Wangs, uh, just shooting into this fight. Uh, BP already down two mechs, and surprisingly, Escardo one mech down, but f six mechs completely fresh. It, this is a full brawl. But only like one mech has been hurt so far, and BPL just everyone's uh, fell apart here. Escardo just. Fully ran him over with the Wang Gang. That was devastating. Ralphie the Commando. Oh, well, he ran into the fight a little too late, and now he's stuck. And he's going to die. Oh, he's going to get changed by the Wangs. Oh, Ralphie. The Wangs are going to get you. Oh, they're going to get you. Ooh, nice AC-20 shot by Flo. Ralphie just tried to duck, uh, just tried to dodge for his life. Eventually gets taken out. Belly here, the only one standing. Now they have a four cap. The problem is they did not kill enough mechs in the fight. These guys just have to spread out, put one big boy on three caps. And then send two to a fourth cap, right? And... That's it. And then one guy can go hunting. That's all they need to do. And they got two caps. Uh, they got a second cap back, so I don't think BPL... I don't think they had no... Yeah, they definitely didn't have the advantage enough or a four cap long enough to make this close, so... This charge is going to run right into the spider here. Spider gets a shot off, but I don't think he he's not going to he's going to try to get get away. I thought he was going to sit, try to fight, but I think he's going to get legged. Yeah, that leg is one touch. He's he's one miss jump away, but that champion's going to get him. He, yep, there we go. 
Champion drops down on him. Legs uh, Bella here. Champion's going to finish him off. And there it goes. GG's. No idea what happened to my lobby controls, though. That was weird. Even for a while, there are like a mech cockpit outline in the spectator view. I've never seen that glitch before. Or, sorry, feature. I've never seen that feature before. BPL, again, um, Ralphie unfortunately doesn't get any damage out. But yeah, they just, they got caught kind of off guard. I was caught more off guard because I was trying to fix my spectator cameras. But just not much damage at all. Uh, they, this was a, a, a strong win by Escarden. Don Perengo, 598, one kill. Uh, Foy and Paul Sess, two kills each. Yeah, pretty consistent damage numbers again. This time, all around 500. And GG's. All right, give me one moment to get the scoreboard updated. It's going. All right, they first ban Rubelite. Uh, BPL probably gonna ban form. Yeah, there we go. Polar it is. Yeah. yeah, I think I heard a can't tell if I'm hearing a cat like with a deep voice crying outside or a kid. So weird. Uh just waiting on uh, S card in here to pick their side. Once they do, I'll get these teams swapped over and stuff. Uh... Alright, they want team two, so no swaps. Alright, team one five minutes. Okay, that was pretty simple. I didn't have to change anything. So, let's talk about that last drop. Oh, yeah, ha ha ha, guys. Alright. S quadron. S quadron. Yeah, ha ha ha. Okay, uh, I'll use the 100% throttle and throttle down. Um... On the numpad, I'll use the 100% throttle button, like, if I want to, like, something, right? Or take a drink and just take my hands off the keyboard and just let my mech auto-walk. Also, while I'm at it, auto-walk should be a feature in, like, every game where there's a chance that you have to, like, hold a, a, a key to move for, like, more than a minute with nothing else going on other than you just get into a new location. Yeah. Every every adventure game, every first person shooter, again this game, yeah, they all need auto walk. <laughs> the Wang Bang, <laughs> nah, I, the Wang Gang. I like the Wang. But I respect it. I respect it. All right, now on to the actual map. So this one was pretty straightforward. Kind of massive fight is happening right here, right? Now, all the events leading up to it, not a hundred percent certain. Okay, but south side push happened. Um, huge fight here. Escarded with their max and stuff just ran over BPL and and then. Took all the caps. BPL had a capper. 
tried to take some back caps uh, to keep the cap game going. Didn't fully work out for him, but it happens. But yeah, um, it was a pretty straightforward fight. Now we're going to go to the next map here. Since we're playing Polar, Polar will be interesting. Uh, the Polar spawns aren't correct. Spawns are actually here. That didn't work out like I thought in my head. Okay, try that again. Um, it's about here. Something like that? I think it's where the spawns are now. Basically these generalized areas. Because it's slightly in front of Sigma. Uh, with Escard and doing range stuff, uh, they chose Team 2 sides. So, I kind of actually, I'm expecting range trader up here. Here we go. Expect uh, range trader here. Here, maybe even one way back here. Uh, one of these hills over here in this general area. I'll make it bigger. It's a general area. I expect a semi concave firing line and then taking Gamma, Theta, Sigma. Trying to hold it. Basically, do a cap and hold strat. And their firing line is going to be basically like this general area, right? These two caps safe behind you. Excuse me. And this cap, you know, directly in front. And then, if you can, then you go back cap the, these. Uh, team one side. Uh, basically, team one's BPL in here, so I'm not going to... Well, they did take a A range deck. Or a couple, actually. So, what do I know, right? I expect something. I expect them to send mechs here. They might send one here uh, to these hills, but I expect the most of the, the mechs are going to try to rotate this way. Because by rotating that way, you now make your firing line this concave right, and then back here, these two caps become protected by your firing line, right? Um, and then well, this is kind of how a lot of these, uh, that's how a lot of the games go. Whether the fire lines are here or shifted 90 degrees one way, you know, it's, it's the general gist of what happens. Kappa here is a pretty open cap. So once they can get mechs over here, if the enemy tries a back cap, a mech can just like park his butt in cover, then turn around and get a shot here. Epsilon's a little more guarded. This is like a refinery or something. Team 1's locked. Team 2's on 5 minute. So it's harder to, to kill someone up here, but you, you could get a... We see people put range traders as far back here, but people play it a lot more further back. Which you could totally do if you have the, the extreme extreme range. It's still... It's, this is still going to be a problem for BPL, this match. This this Gamma Hill, if they, they don't send anything to contest it early, like if they don't if they don't run this way with a light pack and secure it, I'm I'm certain um, Escarded is going to use this and pressure base virtually the whole map. So the the whole where it matters, right? Like these the central grid squares. And if they do that, BPL is BP, uh, unless BPL has a bunch of range max, there's not much they can do about it. Now both teams are locked. I'm gonna swap us back, and we're gonna get this party started. This is also the last drop of the evening. So hopefully, um, it's a good one. I think on MWO Leagues three, there's another game going. If if someone knows for certain, they can shill it in the uh, the chat. Oh, while we're waiting here to load, we'll check the. Oh no, Ralphie zero bomb. Yeah, Bakey. Yeah, yeah, Ralphie. 
Ralphie had his moment. It's okay, though. We still love Ralphie. Chopship's just hanging in the air. You guys remember Old Polar? Like, it's it feels like it's been so long now. It's hard to imagine that all this was just rolling hills of snow. And then a single... A single, uh, you know, radar dish just smack in the middle of the map, and it was like, "All right, everybody, go get it." <laughs> Domin uh, domination of that map was just the best, wasn't it, guys? Wasn't it great? Like you have you have this little hill, and the whole enemy team's behind it. So when you peek the hill to like shoot, you get shot by like five guys, or you yolo forward and you just you get just die. <laughs> <laughs> or your team doesn't push fast enough, the enemy team decides to roll on you from the side, and next thing you know, 12, as like half your team has pushed, the other just half didn't, the entire enemy team pushed, and now it's like 6v12. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. Take a look at Max here. Escardin, Arctic Wolf, Spirit Bear, uh, three Arctic Wolves, two Executioners, and two Spirit Bears. Oh, they're going full brawl. There's no other way to put it. SRM brawlers. They're not moving. Now they're moving. Okay. Get worried there, buddies. Take a look at these spare bears. You look rusted, this shit. Yours is painted just like mine. Little green accents going on there. Alright, over at BPL side, we got triple linebackers. Uh, those battle masters? Triple Battlemaster, Triple Linebacker, and a Mara or, uh, Mad Dog. That's a Mad Dog, boys. Uh, six SR sixes, two heavy small lasers. That looks actually looks pretty hot, like pretty spicy hot. Eight medium pulse, okay. Eight medium pulse, one rocket. Eight medium pulse. The flag. I can barely tell what it is because it's like so dark. I love the flag. Style points for bringing in comp, too. Now, Escardo is actually kind of spread out here. If Ralphie's team's a huge ball, they have no Overwatch yet. Not that they have any Overwatch mechs, but... Oh, Ralphie's... You guys! Ah! BPL! BPL! Start looking left and right! <laughs> you guys, this is the third drop where you didn't see somebody. Um, these two spirit bears, I think, are just going to get ran over. Our two wolves are coming in, but uh, they're going to be out of this fight for a second. Battlemaster, Hedgehog goes in first. He runs through the enemy team. Kodiaks nail him. The rest of the team got kind of stuck behind this rock here. They might still be able to pull this off. Battlemaster surprisingly still alive. Uh, Arctic Wolf goes down, and a Battlemaster goes down. Linebackers, uh, they're trying to finish off this Kodiak Azur. Uh, Azur is still hobbling along. Ralphie might actually die first. No, Azur goes down, then Ralphie. Uh, trade for trade there. Uh, scrap, scrap Metal is still alive in his Kodiak. I'm surprised. He's surrounded by linebackers. It's still alive. Uh, that's a mech that should die. Uh, he got legged and he's just being shot all over. Focus fire, people. Focus fire. Time to kill is important in these kind of brawls. Scrap metal does finally go down. Uh, Foy 5 and his Arctic Wolf and Dawn being charged right now. Foy might actually pick Bel Air. Wraith and his linebacker dies. Uh, this is now swinging Escarda's favor. It's just a Battlemaster Marauder and a linebacker left. Versus two Executioners and two Arctic Wolves. One of the Arctic Wolves is almost dead. You can tell that everyone's getting heat capped because no one's firing nearly as much as they were a minute ago. Uh, Foy 5 might get picked by this linebacker. Yeah, just the focus fire. It looks like some mechs went legs, some went torsos, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how much damage you actually put out because I think you actually did put out a lot here. Uh, Artos goes down in the battle master. Executions are still alive. Uh, these this linebacker and mad dog, I believe, are halved. Yeah, they don't have a a lot of HP or missiles left. 
Rad, the, the Mad Dog self-destructs. Executioner was shut down. Um, the Slimebacker, is he out of ammo? Nah, just heat capped. Flow State is uh, absolutely heat capped because he has overheated every shot. Uh, he's apparently... Oh, there he goes. He's one touch CT. Oh, he's one touch. Oh, Millsurp, just run around the execution. He just got to scrape his butt. Scratch the back. Executioner's one shot. Yeah! Holy shit! Millsurp! Millsurp! You just got to scratch the back of the executioner. I just scratch his ass. He's one touch. He... He literally has one HP. <laughs> Actually, I think it's I think it's less than one HP when the, when it shows blank and then fills. I think it's somewhere between zero and one. Ah, oh, just just give me item. Just give just touch it. I oh, get, get, get it. Get, what are you doing? Don't run down. <laughs> oh, he's self distracted. <laughs> oh. I think they win. Yeah, they're going to get this. They're going to flip Gamma. Holy shit, they're going to win. <laughs> well done, BPL. You got a slight issue with Congo line. Uh, a Congo line there with the push. Tighten that up and that would have went a lot better. Milsert Methophile. Oh, Metho. Metho. I'm just gonna call you Milsert meth, meth file. Yeah, that works for me. GGs. Look how injured this boy is. Give everyone a wave. Or just stare. Look at all that damage. Well played. I believe once he flips us the gamma, that should be match. Uh, that should be match. Gamma. Yep. There we go. All right, that is a win for B or Van Zant Militia BPL. Call them either or. Uh, it's still a three-two. Escarta wins the this, this uh, match uh, with nine, ten, eleven points to uh, Van Zant's Militia six, seven, eight, nine. So eleven to nine. That's not bad. All right, we're going to get back out here to the lobby. Escardo's your victors tonight. Give both teams GG's. And then we'll start kicking them out. Everyone watching, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Hope you guys enjoyed the cast. Uh, the, I think, like I said, I think there's a, another game going on in W Leagues 3. I don't know if it's over yet or not. Uh, otherwise, stay tuned uh, for next weekend's uh, matches. Generally Friday to Sunday. Friday, Saturday with most of them. Try to get a few more cast-ins, get a few, a few more games. Uh, it seems a couple of the divisions are already getting down to... There's a couple front runners and everyone else is in the dust. So it looks like a couple of divisions are already coming... Are already down to uh, the top two teams and how they perform these next two weeks. So we're looking forward to seeing how those all play out. Otherwise, thank you everyone for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the re uh, what's left of your Sunday evening. And then enjoy your week. I hope you know one has the case of the Mondays. You guys all have a good one.